On May 16th, 2020, the EBU broadcast the official Eurovision replacement show, Europe Shine a Light. And it was a really tough watch. It's Saturday, the 16th of May 2020. Live from Hilversum, the Netherlands. This is Eurovision. Europe, shine a light. Yes, indeed, on what would have been the grand final of this year's contest, the EBU instead broadcast a special programme honouring all 41 acts that were due to compete. It was a mix of song clips, messages from the artists involved, and special performances from the likes of Johnny Logan, Marnes, and Netta. And there was no competitive element. It was purely a two-hour highlight of what could have been. And honestly, it was pretty damn depressing. I entered it thinking it was going to be a fun, light-hearted two-hour look at the acts of 2020. I thought that even in dark times like these, the Eurovision would shine through as a beacon of hope. But oh, how I was wrong. Instead, it was a two-hour funeral for Eurovision 2000. And 20. Und Veranstaltungen ist wegen der Corona Krise nun auch der DC. Eurovision Song Contest 2020 is cancelled. And it wasn't necessarily a bad thing, it just wasn't what I or I think anyone watching was expecting. The leading show here in the UK was the BBC's Come Together, essentially a glorified clip show of some of the best Eurovision songs of all time. And honestly, it was great. It really lifted my spirits and got me into that party mood. It was fantastic. We couldn't deny you your Eurovision fix. Tonight, we're celebrating some of the greatest Eurovision performances from the last 64 years. And then Shine a Light began, and it was a whole different mood. Good evening Europe and good morning Australia! They opened with Johnny Logan, the host of the show, and a choir of fans singing What's Another Year, which just made my heart sink from the start. We begin with another icon, a man who has won no less than three times. And we of course talking about the one and only Mr. Johnny Logan. It was as if they were singing What's Another Year without the Eurovision. It really pulled at my heartstrings. But the heartache did not stop there. Oh no, it did not. It had a performance by Marne shown side by side with clips of healthcare workers working on the front line. We are the heroes of our time. Heroes. Oh, oh. There was a beautiful rendition of Hallelujah with Galliatari and some Dutch junior Eurovision stars. And of course, there was the title performance itself. All 41 acts and Katrina singing Love Shine a Light. Which, like, Jesus, guys. It was lovely to see them honouring our last winning song, but at the same time, it was in this really depressing, really sad setting. Oh, and this year's Italian entry sung his song from a deserted amphitheatre too, which just killed me. His song is all about feeling alone and being isolated away from the ones you love, and it could not be more fitting for the world right now. It was not all doom and gloom though, surprisingly. There were some genuinely uplifting moments in the broadcast too. After each song snippet was played, the acts got to do a little video message to their fans. And my faves, Davi and Sunit, absolutely owned theirs. Davi went full Davi and did this weird green screen thing where he keyed himself as his backing singers. I just wanted to say thank you for listening. The response to think about things has been overwhelming. And Sunit, our lovely lady from San Marino, did this. Ciao and let's be freaky. See you next year. She's back, guys. She's back. I honestly think she would have gone top 10 this year, so I'm absolutely ecstatic that she's coming back. 
It's gonna be so good. There was also a really lovely moment where they interviewed our commentator, Graham Norton. Where are you when Katrina and the waves won in, that was 1997 in Dublin? I imagine I was face down on the floor of a bar. I, <laughs> I really have no recollection at all. And for all his faults, I did genuinely feel quite proud watching along. It was just lovely to see him flying the flag for the UK, even if it was only flying at half mast. I didn't know what to expect from your show tonight, you know, and there was going to be no vote, no winner, what was it going to be like? But in fact, it's been lovely oh. because I felt like I spent two hours with the Eurovision family. And of course, we had the utterly, utterly fabulous Nikki Tutorials there as co-host. Good evening, Europe and Australia. It is time for another online update. She is just a fantastic, fantastic host. I never quite realised the range of that lady's talents. I really hope they bring her back next year. Now, the one big criticism of the evening I kept seeing online was that there wasn't any competitive element to the programme. Tonight isn't the Eurovision Song Contest. It is instead a celebration of the 41 countries, songs and performers that would have taken part. People were suggesting we should have been rating the music videos or live performances instead of having this commemorative two hour program. But honestly, I was kind of glad they didn't do it. The whole point of Eurovision is to bring acts together under one roof on one stage. They all have an equal opportunity to shine. And so by making them do it all at home or by using their music video, it just wouldn't have been fair. I do, however, saying that, I think they should have done some kind of unofficial fan vote. A vote that didn't mean anything in the grand scheme of the song contest, but just gave the fans some closure. No grand final, but we do have a very special show for you. On the whole, I honestly don't know what to think about Europe Shine a Light still. It's kind of hard for me to put into words what that broadcast made me feel. Obviously if you've been subscribed to this channel for a while then you will know that I am kind of obsessed with Eurovision. As obviously when it did get cancelled I obviously understood entirely why it had to be but at the same time it was frankly devastating. And so watching Europe shine a light was just tough. It was just difficult. We hope this show will comfort you in some small way knowing that it'll be back next year. What about you, humble viewer? What did you make of Europe shine a light? Did it meet your expectations or were you expecting something a little bit different? Let me know down below in the comments. As always, if you did enjoy that, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and click subscribe for more. I make loads of videos about all things Eurovis, including one where I look at my favorite artists from this year's contest. If you do want to keep watching my stuff, just click the links on screen now. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye.